heaven. The images that we see of heaven, the Bible says the gates of pearl, streets of gold, the images never can do it justice. It's, it's way more beautiful. We know it's a wonderful place that we want to go. We know we don't want to go to the alternative, right? And we know we're going someplace. There's a famous paragraph that John Wesley put into the preface of his sermons. I want to read that to you today. He says, To candid, reasonable man, I am not afraid till I open would have been the most in most thoughts of my heart. I've thought I am a creature of a day, passing through life as an arrow through the air. I'm a spirit come from God and returning to God, just hovering over the great gulf, till a few moments hence, I am no more seen, I drop into an unchangeable eternity. In light of that, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. That was, that was a, that's a smart desire, isn't it? God himself has condescended to teach me the way. For this very end, he came from heaven. He hath written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book at any price. Give me the book of God. Then he says, I have it. I have it. He gave it to me. I have it, and now I can understand it. And I know now the way to heaven. So what do we learn from Scripture about how to get to heaven? Jesus, of course, is predominant in the New Testament, predicted in the Old, and he's the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He's the same one who proved that he had the authority to make that statement by raising himself from the dead. This is what Jesus said, the one who says, I am the way. He said this, he said this to Nicodemus. Remember, Nicodemus came to him by night in secret, and he wanted to know basically how to get to heaven, how to enter into the kingdom of God. And, and Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Now John Wesley said the, that the marks of the new birth of, of someone who has been born again he said they are faith. First faith, he says, faith that's evidenced in power over sin. So if you have no power over sin, that shows us, shows everyone, shows yourself that you don't have true saving faith. But the second mark is hope. Now this has to do with assurance of salvation, which comes through the witness of the Spirit. His Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are a child of God. And then thirdly, John Wesley said, third mark of the new birth is love. Love for God, shown through obedience to his commands, and love for people, shown through, through good works. So, we need to be born again. These are the marks of the new birth. How do we become born again? Well, we have to become as a little child. It was the chapter after this where people were bringing children to Jesus and saying, bless my children, pray for them. And the disciples said, don't bother Jesus with this. But Jesus said what? Suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. In, ver in chapter 18, the disciples had asked him, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And to illustrate, Jesus set a child in their midst and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, 
The same as the great is great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, what's a child like? What's a child like? Let's say a, um, a three or four year old. They're completely reliant on their parent for everything that they have. They're humble. They realize they, they can do nothing on their own and they have faith. They just, they trust. They trust their mom and their dad, their caregiver. Maybe too much, but they, they trust. And they are completely reliant. And what does God expect us to do? To humble ourselves before him, to admit that we've sinned, to admit that we need forgiveness, to acknowledge the truth of this verse, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But a lot of people can't admit that they've done anything wrong. In fact, you ask your, your average person out there on the street, and Ray Comfort is, is famous for doing this. He has this, this good person test that he gives. He does these man on the street interviews and he asks people, so do you consider yourself a good person? And I want us to, Anthony, I want you to help me here. We're going to uh, uh, demonstrate a little bit this good person test and what someone who thinks that they're all right on their way to heaven, but they're not willing to accept forgiveness and go the way of the cross. What a typical response is. Maybe you could bring that over here and, and come a little closer. All right, so this is the, the good person test. There are four questions. WDJD, okay? Oh, you're ready. Okay, so, so Anthony's going to be my uh, unsaved friend. He thinks he's good enough to get to heaven, but he, he, but he hasn't trusted Christ for salvation. He's not really following Jesus. All right, ready? Anthony. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I wanted to ask you a question. Sure. Would you consider yourself a good person? Oh yeah, 100. percent I mean, um, just last week I gave uh, this homeless guy a couple things, a couple bucks, and I go to church about every two, three weeks. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. 100%. I go to charity every year. It's, Do you? Oh yeah, 100. All right. Yeah. So you're a good person. All right. Well, do you keep the Ten Commandments? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think well, have, so. Have you ever told a lie? Yeah. What does that make you? Well, that's a liar. <laughs> have you ever stolen anything? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Okay. What does that make you? A thief. Have you ever hated anybody? Okay. Jesus said, if you hate somebody, that's like murder. It's like murder in your heart. I mean, I didn't murder anybody. That, I didn't hate someone that much. That's breaking, that's breaking the sixth commandment. Well, I didn't so, think about it that way before. So, based on that, and we could go over some more of these commandments, but based on that, if you were to stand before God and be judged by your keeping of the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? Probably guilty. Okay. Probably guilty. So, then where would you go? Would you go to heaven or hell? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a good person, though. So, what, what but I I'm do just saying, go, well, based on, no way. based on the commandments. Yeah. Where would you go? If you were just guilty. Just based, not, not based off of. Like the thing I like me giving something to a homeless guy or whatever. No, think about it. If if someone murdered somebody and they went before the judge and the jury, and they tried to say, "Well, I've done all of these other good things. I've walked an old lady across the street, and I've given lots of money to charities." Would that make up for that murder? Is that ever a consideration before the jury? Yeah, the the, the judge I'd want to kick out. If if, if he let you go, let's say you were that murderer, would that be a fair judge? No, not at all. No, no. So it's not good enough. Your good deeds will never outweigh your bad deeds. So let me ask you this. Does this, does this concern you? I mean, to some extent, yes. Yeah, to some extent. 
Would you like to hear what God says about the way to heaven, how to get to heaven, and make sure you're not judged for those sins? Because there is a way out of this, according to the Bible. Uh, sure, I mean, I mean, I, I'm still, I'm still at the part where I mean, I'm still, I'm still a good person. I, I feel like I'm a good person. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, uh, let's let's talk about it some more later. All right, so let's. <laughs> all right, good job. Thank you. Give me a hand. All right, thank you. So what I'm trying to help Anthony with here is to admit that he has sinned, that he needs God. Again, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin is death. Now, the good news, we don't just leave Anthony there wondering, being concerned about his situation. The good news is that there is eternal life. There is a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But God showed his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So there's hope. And Jesus says this. He was talking to, to the people and he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, this, uh, the story he is referring to, which is one of my favorite illustrations to show what, what Christ did for us and, and how we must respond, is the story of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. They're complaining, they're griping, they're rebelling, they want to go back to Egypt. They, they don't think Moses is treating them right. They don't get the food they don't want and so on. And so God sends serpents in their midst, poisonous snakes that bite them, and many of them die, and they, they get really scared, and they, they repent. They ask Moses to forgive them and to go to God and find a solution. And so God tells Moses, lift up a serpent, a brass serpent on a pole, and tell the people that if they look at that serpent, they will live. That's what happened. They looked and they instantly were healed of their, of their uh, problem. And they lived. There's a, a uh, modern song that alludes to this story. Do you remember it? Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. A couple of the verses. Life is offered unto you. Hallelujah. Eternal life your soul shall have if you'll only look to him. Look to Jesus who alone can save. I will tell you how I came to Jesus when he made me whole. Twas believing on his name. Hallelujah. I trusted and he saved my soul. So it's by looking to Jesus. Jesus used this as an illustration. He says, if you look to me, just as they looked at that serpent on that pole, you look to me, you put your trust in me, you will be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, we cry out to him for salvation. And Romans 10, 9 says, If you openly, openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this because there are two groups of people probably here. One is those of you who know Christ, who are, who are born again, and you are commissioned to help people come into this relationship. So I'm, I'm telling you, kind of giving you an outline of how you could show somebody. There also may be somebody here that doesn't have assurance of salvation, doesn't know that they're born again, and this is the path. This is the way that God says you can get to heaven. So cry out to Jesus for salvation. Admit that you've sinned. 
believing that Jesus died for you and rose again so that you can be forgiven and be willing to turn away from anything you know is wrong. We confess our sins. We confess Christ, but we also confess our sins. Repent of our sins. Turn to God that your sins may be blotted out. And John says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this isn't an easy believism. We turn away from the sin that is damning us and we receive Christ. Do you remember what Jesus said in Revelation? He says, I stand at the door. He's talking about the door of our heart. He says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come unto him, into him and will sup with him, have fellowship with him. And he with me. And then John 1, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. It's as simple as A, B, C. I'm going to give you an A, I'm going to give you a B, I'm going to give you a C. Are you ready? Okay, to summarize everything that we just said, a, admit that you've sinned, that, you've de- that you deserve severe punishment and cannot save yourself, and be willing to turn away from your sin. B, believe that Jesus Christ, the sinless God-man, died on the cross and rose from the dead so that you, this, is, this isn't just for everybody else, it's for you, that you can be forgiven and cleansed of your sin. And C, claim Christ as your Lord and Savior. Receive him into your heart and life, trusting him to save you. Choose to follow him. And don't be ashamed to tell others that you know Christ. Here is a, um, a sinner's prayer. I wrote this prayer. I wrote this out in the middle of the night. I've shared with you a sinner's prayer before. This is, this is worded a little differently. So let's, let's take a look at this. Pray this with me. If you don't know Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, you are God the Son, my Creator. And I come to you humbly as a little child, realizing that I've sinned against you and I need forgiveness. I know I cannot save myself. But I thank you that you died on the cross and rose again to provide the only way that I could be forgiven. I believe that you did this for me. I now turn away from my sin and I receive you into my heart. I accept your forgiveness. And I'm determined to reject sin and follow you the rest of my life. And then, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for making me your child adopting me into your family. I claim you as my Lord and Savior. Because you promised to come into my heart when I invited you in, I am now a child of God. I am born again. Help me every day to rejoice in your mercy and goodness to me and to remain faithful to you. I'm going to serve you forever. Amen. Well, after you pray that prayer, what next? Tell somebody else that you've received Christ's forgiveness. Confess Jesus before men because then he will confess you before the Father. And then pray and read, listen to the Bible every single day, maybe all day long, asking God to guide each step that you take in your new Christian walk. All right. I want to say a little prayer and then we're going to take communion to close out the service. Lord, I pray that uh, you would help us to embody the truth of these passages that we've, that we've uh, tried to explain. Lord, may every single one of us know you, truly have faith in you that, that enables us to have victory over sin, that gives us assurance of salvation and love for others. Oh God, help us to truly embrace you and follow you and love you and to show proof of that that relationship way we pray this all in Jesus name amen